Hi garden friends, my name is Alexa and welcome to, back to Bloom and Wilt Gardens. Today we are talking about the August garden in the series covering the 12 month home garden. All the information on today's video and all the previous videos in this series is found in my Great Lakes Veggie Gardener Guide. A 12 month guide to growing your home vegetable garden. For me in Northeast Ohio, I am growing food about 10 months out of the year, harvesting food in January. It's a wonderful thing. You can do it too and let's learn how together. This guide can be found on my website at www.bloomandwiltgardens.com and if you want to see all of the previous videos that have tons and tons and tons of wonderful information, make sure you check out the playlist that I have linked below to see the last, let's see, seven months of home garden information. Let's just get right into it and talk about the August garden and what we need to plan for to be successful in our August home garden. Food preservation season is going to come at you fast and hard. If you are growing a large vegetable garden, you are gonna have to spend some time in your kitchen this month because your tomatoes and peppers are gonna be coming in and you have to know what the heck to do with all of them. If you're growing a small garden, be prepared for lots of tomato sandwiches. So you need to dedicate time and space for drying, freezing, and canning all of the wonderful things that we're going to be picking this month because the harvest season is here. What did you bring me? I have a pocket lizard. Ah! Pocket lizard? It's not gonna hurt you. Yeah. Salamander, right? He's cute. He's I don't huge. wanna I don't wanna touch it. He's cool. He is cool. Do you like the creek? Yeah, where'd you find him? In the chicken area, underneath the bench. Oh chickens would have ate him. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, okay, take it from me. It's like sticky. Do they like water? Ugh. I don't the know what they tail. like. I got water. Is he happy? All right, I was not expecting a salamander intrusion. Back to the August garden. So we were talking about preparing for your incoming harvest. All the things are going to need attention this month. If you have been succession sowing things, you may have been able to space things out. But even in my experience of a succession sowing, everything comes to fruition in August. So be prepared for that. If you want to do a fall garden, you must have all of your fall seedlings planted in the ground by the beginning of the month. If you don't have this done, what you're pushing the limit on is that plant growing enough before the daylight starts to lessen. So even your frost hardy plants, let's say a broccoli for example, Yes, it can withstand frost. Broccoli can withstand temperatures like down to 25 degrees without any kind of cover. If it's big enough, if it's a little baby seedling, it's not going to live. And what happens when it gets really cold is that any of these plants, if they haven't fully matured, then they will go dormant and they'll just stop growing because there's not enough sunlight, there's not enough heat, and they just go into this dormant mode. Which is not a bad thing, but the whole point of growing a fall garden is to get a harvest out of it, right? So if you haven't planted your fall garden by early August, there is a good chance that you're not going to get a harvest out of that garden this year. Now those plants may and should live through the winter, especially if you're covering them with something. But the, again, they're just gonna kind of stop growing. They're gonna go dormant. They're gonna just hang out and preserve as much energy as possible. In the early spring, like early March, they'll wake up and they'll start growing again, which is fine if that's what your goal is. But if you're trying to get a harvest this year, like let's say by Christmas, then you need to make sure your fall garden is planted by early August. 
I'd recommend by early to mid July. But if you haven't done it, early August, you may get away with some things, especially anything that is fast growing. Anything that can mature within the next like 50 days, 50 to 60 days, you may be fine. If it needs more time than that, then you're unlikely to get a harvest of that crop this year. Maybe early next spring, but not this year. In July, we harvested our garlic. So in August, we need to make sure that we are storing our garlic appropriately for the next several months that we want to be using it for. So in July, we should have harvested our garlic and hung our garlic up somewhere to let them cure. After they have been curing for several weeks, now we're into July and we want to bring those things down and prepare them for our longer term storage. So with hard neck garlic, you can try to braid them. Um, that's something I haven't done. I have seen other people do it. I know it's easier with soft neck garlic to braid them and get that nice pretty stalk. Um, but I have seen where people do it with hard neck, so that's an option. What I like to do is cut the stems off the garlic and discard those. I put them in my compost. So I'm left with just the bulb and I like to put them in a mesh uh, cotton bag that's breathable so that way there's some airflow in them. Um, or you could use like a wood crate and I keep those in a cool dark location so that could be like a lower cabinet or cupboard um, or a root cellar if you have those. You just don't want them to get very hot because what will happen if they are in a warmer kind of humid environment is that they will sprout greens which kind of signals it to start growing again which for most people they don't want that to happen so we need to keep them in a cool dark environment that in some kind of breathable crate or bag uh, in august we're going to be um, harvesting potatoes and you're going to need a plan for curing your potatoes as well. Like the garlic, we can't just pull up our potatoes and put them in a box and put them away. They will get moldy. They have to have a time frame where they can, their skins can dry out and that is the curing period. So you need to have a cool dark location where your potatoes can be stored for about two weeks so they can cure. And you know, be creative. Um, I've done it in my barn that we use as a garage. I laid a piece of plastic down, put the potatoes in there because it's dark in there and they cured in there that way. Um, or you can put them in a basement, in a closet, under a bed, get creative. But have a plan for what you're going to do. Lots of your plants that have gone to seed by this point are probably also going to be ready to harvest those seeds. So any spring crops like spinach or broccoli or cabbage that has gone to seed, by August, they're usually ready to start to collect those seeds. So if the plant has turned brown and is nice and crispy, um, just take a big bowl under that plant and break those seed pods, collect all the seeds in a bowl, and then put them into an envelope or a plastic baggie save the seeds, label them, and then plant them again. Garden's gonna become wild, it may become weedy, and you may feel like giving up, throwing your hands up and just letting it go for the ride, and that is okay. A wild August garden is the my most favorite time of year because it's usually beautiful with plants and flowers, and by that point, I don't even care about the weeds. I am just enjoying the entire experience. So if you're feeling like you can't keep up with your August garden, that's fine. Let it go, enjoy the ride, and harvest all the beautiful fruits that are coming to ripen at that time. Okay, quick location change, my battery died. So now we are in my beautiful home vegetable garden. Next section, we're gonna talk about what we can still be planting for our home gardens in the month of August. And there's still quite a bit that we can plant, even this time of year. So things like peas and beets and carrots all do well in cooler weather. So as we move closer into the fall and 
our temperatures start to decline, those plants are going to do fine in those colder temperatures. Peas like the cold. So we can grow peas in the early spring and then into the fall. And then with the beets and the carrots, the warm temperatures that we're going to be experiencing in August will help those to germinate. And as the temperatures slowly decline over the next several weeks, it will not impact the growth of those root crops. And what's nice about planting these things in August is that we can leave the fully mature beets and carrots in the ground through those colder months. So that way you can harvest your carrots for Thanksgiving. You can harvest your beets for Christmas. It's really nice to use the earth as a refrigerator. So you can put those seeds directly in the ground in August and likely be able to harvest those things towards the end of the year. All of your leafy greens can still be succession sowed this time of year as well because they don't take that long to grow, usually less than 50 days for many varieties. And also they like the colder weather. So if you try to grow lettuce through the summer months, it likely doesn't taste quite as good or it tries to go to seed more often. But if you put seeds in the ground now in August, Again, as the temperatures start to decline through the months of September and October, those plants are going to taste better and grow better, but the hot temperatures that we have in August will help the germination of those plants. So we have to work with the environment around us and plant things that grow better with that type of season that we're in, and those are anything in the leafy green family. If you started your fall garden plants like broccolis and cabbage and cauliflower in the house, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and transplant those things outside in August. You need them to get to a certain maturity level before it starts to get really cold and we lose sunlight as we get closer to the solstice. So you wanna get those outside as soon as possible. As far as what we can prune in August, so tomatoes are going to be going rampant this month. You're going to be harvesting all kinds of tomatoes, but you also want to make sure you're pruning off any excess branches to promote really good airflow around the plant because as the plant becomes fully mature, it's gonna have a lot of greenery, a lot of it you don't need, and it will start to spread disease if any of those leaves kind of get yellow or spotted so you want to cut those off and then if you want to grow larger fruits then you want to cut off suckers so the suckers are the part of the tomato plant that kind of grow in the uh, what we call the armpit of the branches so if you have two branches like this the sucker comes out the middle and that is where the fruits are produced so it'll set the flowers. If you're trying to grow bigger fruits, start cutting off any excess suckers that don't have a fruit on them already. And that will promote the plant to put more energy into the fruits that are already on the plant. And as they ripen, they'll get bigger because again, they're not competing for energy going off to creating new fruits because you've cut the suckers off. So any of your plants, um, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, squashes, anything that you see that has any yellowing, um, not very good looking leaves, try to cut those off um, as often as you can because that will just help slow down the spread of the disease that inevitably happens this time of year. I mean, we really can't prevent it a whole lot, but we can slow it down. If you're done with the garden and you're tired, then of course you can just let it go and let things happen and let nature take its course. That's also fine. But if you're really trying to prolong your harvest as much as you can, 
um, and get more fruits out of these plants that you've been growing than trying to keep up with them and cut off all of the yellowing dark spotted yucky branches is going to help you keep a keep your harvest going longer august we are picking all kinds of things it is the month of harvest we've been harvesting a little bit here and there in june and july but august it really ramps up so you're going to be seeing lots and lots of cherry tomatoes and your big slicing tomatoes are going to be ripening as well. Picking a ripe tomato in the middle of the afternoon on a hot day and eating it then in that moment is like another, is unlike any other experience of tasting a tomato. If you buy a tomato from a traditional grocery store and eat it, it's not going to compare to the flavor of a tomato on a hot summer day where you pick it off the vine and eat it. The two things are not alike. They are not the same. If you have any access to a homegrown tomato and can eat it as soon as you pick it, you will realize that tomatoes are the fruit that their name implies. Tomatoes are a fruit. When we eat tomatoes, we don't really think they're a fruit because they're not sweet like the fruits we know. But on a hot summer day, they are fruits. All of your peppers should begin to ripen and turn colors. So as I mentioned in July's video, you will have peppers that turn green first. All peppers are green first but when they're fully ripe they will turn a color and depending on what kind of variety it is will dictate what color that pepper turns so they could turn red they could turn yellow they could turn brown or purple or orange but they will turn a color any color other than green when they're fully ripe so if you want that fully ripe delicious sweet or hot pepper wait till it turns a color you'll start to see it happening in august you will have eggplants that are beginning to ripen eggplants when they're ready to pick are going to be um, usually a deep purple depending on the variety some eggplant varieties are more on the magenta side there are even white eggplants but um, depending on what kind of variety you're growing, you want to kind of feel it and squish it a little bit. It shouldn't be very super hard. It should be kind of soft and a little squishy and be the color that it's supposed to be depending on the variety that you're growing. And then you'll know that it's ripe. Uh, you'll have potatoes and corn and onions all coming in. If you grew carrots and cabbage and put those in the ground um, in the spring, those will all be ready to be harvested now this time of year. Of course, you'll have your summer squash, your zucchinis and yellow squash coming in still as long as those plants are still healthy. Or if you have been succession sowing them this whole time, you'll be getting a continuous crop. If you're growing okra, you should start to see the pods emerging and can begin harvesting those. Okra is one of those plants that one day it can be completely bare and then the next day you have like tons of pods that are ready to pick. They grow so fast. So once you start to notice your okra is growing the pods, keep up with picking them. Check them every single day. They grow so fast. You will have an abundance of green beans and cucumbers and all of your sunflowers either have bloomed already or will be blooming. And you can keep your sunflowers up for just their beauty or after they bloom, you can let them start to droop and they start to die back and all of those seeds will begin to also dry out. So you can save sunflower seeds for eating. Um, if you don't want the birds to go after them while they're in their drying phase, you can put something over the big flower head like pantyhose, for example, to keep the birds out of them if you wanna save the seeds. 
or you can cut the whole head off and then put it in a safe location where it can continue to dry out and then you can save the seeds. And if you wanna eat the seeds in the future, you can toast them in your oven or you can save the seeds and plant them for future sunflowers. Basil will likely also be in abundance by August. Uh, if you cut your basil back often, it will encourage it to keep growing. Basil will try to set a flower, and like any other plants that try to flower, um, once it does flower, the flavor often changes and it doesn't put out as much greenery anymore. So if you want to keep your basil producing new green leaves, you know, until your first frost comes, and then keep it cut back as often as possible to prevent the flowers from maturing. There are varieties of blueberries that will continue to ripen into August as well. Most of mine come in July, um, the varieties that I'm growing, but I do know that there are others that come to fruition in August. So with the preservation that we're going to do in August, just, just plan time in your schedule on your weekends, in your evenings. If you're growing a lot of tomato plants, you're preserving your tomatoes this month and next month, but it's gonna start in August. Usually towards the end of the month is when the big wave of tomatoes start to come in. And there are a lot of things that you can do with tomatoes. You can make salsa, that's an easy one. Making tomato sauce, I like to make tomato sauce by taking my tomatoes and cutting them up into kind of quarter slices, putting them in the oven and roasting them in the oven for about an hour. And then I pull them out and then put them into like my blender, blend them up, and then I put them into a big crock pot or roasting pan and let them simmer for about 24 hours to let all of the excess water off of them. And then, of course, I add all of my seasonings, basil, oregano, garlic. We put red pepper flakes in our tomato sauce as well to give it a little bit of spiciness. And after about 24 hours of roasting in either a crock pot or one of those big roasting pans, at that point, then I will water bath can my sauce and it is the best sauce i don't have to add sugar to it or any extra stuff like it is the best sauce that we use all year round for anything that would require tomato sauce or like marinara sauce or pizza sauce i just we use it for anything like that um if you don't want to can your tomatoes um salsa or tomato sauce you can also freeze it in freezer baggies and if you're getting so many tomatoes that you really just can't keep up with it you can dice your tomatoes or freeze them whole and and just either in a bag um and put it just put them in your freezer and deal with them later um i have put whole tomatoes where I take like, I take the core out of them, but I have the whole tomato and I have filled plastic grocery bags with tomatoes and put the whole thing in the freezer. <laughs> and in the middle of winter when I'm not so overwhelmed with things, then I'll pull them out and cook them down into sauce at that time. So if you are getting so many that it's just too much to keep up with, it's absolutely okay to put like the whole tomato or cut them in half and put all of that in the freezer and deal with it later. They're still fine. If you're getting a lot of cabbage and carrots, uh, make coleslaw. I really enjoy homemade coleslaw. It's very easy to do. You take a whole cabbage, you cut it up into tiny, slices same thing with the carrots you mix it all up with some mayo and some lemon juice salt and pepper and you can have a really nice homemade coleslaw and if you're growing eggplant and you're new to growing eggplant not sure what to do with it um eggplant parmesan is a pretty typical uh recipe of what to do with eggplant or you can make baba ganoush which is like a nice dip that you make out of eggplant um, I have frozen slices of eggplant. 
I don't find they taste quite as good when you cook them after they've been frozen, but it's still an option. Canning eggplant, I, I don't really think that works well because it gets way too soft under heat. Um, so if you're going to try and save it for long term, I would suggest either freezing it um, or dehydrating it if you wanted to try that um, or making like the baba ganoush dip and then if you make a big batch of that, you can freeze the dip into smaller portions to use, you know, throughout the winter. So that is all about the August garden, what we should be planning for in the month of August. Lots of great stuff. I hope that you learned something today. And if you did, please like the video, share it with a friend and leave a comment below letting me know what the most helpful part of today's video was. All of the information I shared in this video and all the ones before it and all the ones to come after it are included in my 12 month gardening guide, the Great Lakes Veggie Gardener 12 month, how to get started in the home vegetable garden. Now available on my website at www.bloomandwiltgardens.com. In the next video, we'll be talking all about the September garden, so make sure to subscribe and select the notifications so you know when that video is posted. I hope you all are having a wonderful garden season. Let me know how it's going in the comments, and we'll talk later on the next video. Take care, my friends, and do something you love today.